Hi! In this video, we'll take a look at asymmetric encryption and how it increases the strength of security. Remember that the same key is used to encrypt and decrypt in symmetric encryption. Now, asymmetric encryption uses two keys. Asymmetric encryption is also known as public key encryption because there is a public key that encrypts information and a separate private key that decrypts. Now, for both symmetric and asymmetric encryption, there has to be a secure way to share keys between the sender and the receiver. This is called a key exchange. In symmetric encryption, the same key is used to encrypt and decrypt data, so the key must be shared with the receiver to be able to decrypt the message. Sharing this key between parties must be done in a very secure manner, since anyone who intercepts it can now decrypt the message as well. Asymmetric encryption utilizes two different keys, one to encrypt the data and the other to decrypt the data. One key is shared publicly and the other is kept private. One of the earliest known key exchange algorithms is the Diffie-Hellman key exchange. It was one of the first asymmetric key implementations and it was responsible for securing the exchange of keys. A combination of public keys and private keys were used to establish a shared secret key between two people. This ensured that the secret key could not be intercepted. This secret key was then used to apply symmetric encryption between the two systems. Diffie-Hellman is one of the earliest practical examples of asymmetric encryption. Here's a visual approach of how it's possible to create a secret key without the chance of the private key being intercepted. Instead of keys, let's use paint. The yellow paint is the public key. Alice has a private dark orange paint and Bob has a private teal paint. They each separately mix their private paint with the public yellow paint. Then they trade combinations. So Alice now has the blue paint and Bob has the orange. Now they each add their secret paint colors again. This results in a shared paint color without being able to figure out the private colors. Now the trick of the Diffie-Hellman key exchange is that it's relatively easy to encrypt, but very difficult to attempt to work backwards through those encryption steps. Working backwards through the steps is called reverse engineering. Using an output, cyber attackers can try to reverse engineer an encryption with the hopes of unveiling the input or the key. The math used in the encryption is what makes the reverse engineering virtually impossible. Math functions are used that are easy going forward, but hard to work through backwards. A common mathematical function used in cryptography is the modulus function. This function is simple to use and the output hides the input really well. The modulus is a mathematical calculation that produces the remainder of a division problem. The symbol used is the percentage symbol. Let's see how this works. The equation on the screen can be read as 100 mod 33. We want to find the remainder of this equation if we divided 100 by 33. Well, 33 goes into 100 three times, and 33 times 3 gives us 99. This would give us a remainder of 1, since 100 minus 99 is 1. Okay, so how is this helpful for cryptography? Well, let's try to reverse engineer this problem. If we know that the output, or the answer in this case, is 1, let's attempt to work backwards and find the input, or the key. We know that 100 mod 33 equals 1, but 100 mod 99 also equals 1, and 100 mod 11 equals 1 as well, so which one is it? This is an example of how a key can be hidden really well using modular math. A vulnerability of the Diffie-Hellman's key exchange is a lack of authentication. If Alice believes that she's sending her public key to Bob, but it is really an eavesdropper, then she ends up sharing a secret key with the wrong person. This kind of attack is called the man in the middle attack. A man in the middle attack is a type of cyber attack where an imposter inserts him or herself into a conversation between two parties. This imposter impersonates both parties and gains access to information that the two parties were trying to send to each other. A man in the middle attack allows this imposter to intercept and also send and receive data meant for someone else, or not meant to be sent at all. Either party may not even know what's happening until it's too late. To avoid attacks like these, the RSA encryption was created. The letters R, S, and A come from the last name of its creators, 
Rivas, Shamir, and Aldeman. Not only is this algorithm used for key exchange, but it also includes digital signatures for authentication. RSA was the first widely used asymmetric algorithm used for both signing and encryption. The RSA algorithm uses a three-part process that includes the generation of a key pair, encryption using one of the keys in the key pair, and decryption using the other key in the key pair. Much like Diffie-Hellman, RSA relies on math that is easy to calculate in one direction, but hard to reverse the process. It is based on the principle that it's easy to multiply large numbers, but factoring large numbers is very difficult. For example, multiplying 507 times 717 is not a hard process, but trying to find the factors of 363,519 is very difficult. All right, now it's your turn to explore more about these concepts.